Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you. Let's pray, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The spirit of wisdom, revelation and understanding rest upon us even now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are guiding us into all truth just like Jesus said. And we receive utterance and our daily bread freely. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 11, that's where we are. And yesterday we got to verse 9. Verse 9, it says, Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. I explained that to you yesterday. It says, For this cause ought the man, woman, for this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels did you see that now this is powerful and i'm going to explain this is powerful he said for this cause verse 9 again neither was the woman created for the neither was the man created for the woman but the woman for the man right then he says because of this, the woman ought to have power on her head. Now, that word power actually means a symbol of authority. I want to explain something very, uh, because Paul was talking about something very deep spiritually. Yet, he was mixing it with a bit of tradition, see, the Jewish tradition. Now, you have the same tradition in many places. But I want you to follow me carefully. He said, because the woman was created for the man, it then means that the woman is supposed to always have power on her head. Now, what does it mean, power on her head? A symbol of authority. The woman must carry a symbol of authority. And he says, it is because of the angels. Now, why did he say because of the angels? He didn't say. But there is something deep in there. And what is it? Angels are looking out. He said, I told you something. As a, as a married woman, your communication with God is different. Now, because one, God is not going to deal with you separate from your husband. He will never deal with you that way. Except in a situation whereby your husband is out of covenant with God. And then the Spirit of God wants to save you. Now that's where he can bring an instruction despite your husband. But even that is not a steady instruction. Now, see, what I'm sharing with you, I, I, I know it's very deep. That's why he says, he says, look, it is wrong for a woman to leave her husband and get married to someone else. The, the reason is because when a woman does that, it affects, it affects her relationship and authority with God. Because you can't be under one authority now, and then the next thing you're under another authority. Heaven doesn't work that way. The angels don't work that way. So when, when a woman carries the symbol of authority, now when a woman is married, she ought to carry that symbol of authority. Everywhere she goes. Now, Paul here is talking about when she's praying or prophesying. Now, meaning she is, she is under the influence of the Spirit of God. There's got to be the symbol of authority. That I'm not doing this by myself. In other words, don't question me. That's what it means. Question who? My authority. Now, Watch. Today, in our tradition, the wedding band is the same thing the covering of hair for a woman does in their time. I'm not just saying this. 
I'm, I'm explaining why Paul said this. You know, people, hey, you must cover your hair. You must not cover your hair. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they go, they go, they go. Oh, some say, okay, whenever you, you climb my altar, you must cover your hair. Oh, some say, oh, whenever you uh, pray, you, and then you, you find some people, they want to pray. You say, let's pray. Oh, they, 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 some even use something dirty and they put on their head. Just, you know, some use nylon bags, they just put on the head. Just to have a covering over your head. Hey, listen. The reason your covering he is telling you to cover your hair is to show married, is to show that you are married. Is to show that, look, I don't deal by myself with heaven. I've got a cover that heaven deals with. I pray the Lord give you understanding. That's what the covering of hair means. And I said, the wedding band means the same thing. So, are you saying if a woman is wearing a wedding band, she doesn't need to cover her head? Oh, yes, she doesn't really need to. Because there's a symbol of authority. Even, even today, the wedding band is surer or stronger than the covering of head. Married women. Now, he's talking to married women. Why? Because the angels see you. Not as a free woman. They see you as a woman under authority. And when you speak, you must speak like one who's under authority. So there's no point covering your head and you still talk like you, you have no care. You see, a married woman speaks knowing that she's under authority. Authority of who? Her husband. I, I listen to only God. Not even my husband can tell me what to do. Okay, that marriage is going somewhere to happen. <laughs> You know what I mean? Negative happening. Because when you speak those kind of words, you confuse the angels. You confuse them. There's so much order in heaven. And I pray you just do things right. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now let's go. Let's go on. Let's go on. Let's go on. We just read verse 10. He said, Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman. Neither the woman without the man in the Lord. So husband, you are married. You don't start forming like I'm alone. No, you must carry your wife along in the Lord because God is going to deal with you, with your, with your wife. That's why, listen, listen, you're a man. You just think you can divorce your wife. And you, you say you're divorcing your wife because you want to focus on the ministry. You'll be punished for it. I'm telling you, you will be judged for it. And you may lose your inheritance. He, you, know, you know it's so amazing how, how this life can be deceptive. You think, maybe you're a preacher, and, and you just think your wife is, your, your, is, 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 is becoming an obstacle. Now, if your wife is becoming an obstacle to you, and you have done everything you know to do, take her to the Lord. Go before the Lord and say, Lord, I have a problem. My wife is becoming a challenge for me doing your work. You know what the Lord is going to do? He's going to give you wisdom. But see, let me tell you the truth. If God looks at it that truly, truly you have married the wrong wife, he knows how to take care of it, not you. It's not your responsibility to take care of that. If you take care of it yourself and you think, look, divorcing her or frustrating her out of the marriage is the best thing, you are sowing a seed that you are going to reap. See, Satan is smart. Don't, the Bible says we're not ignorant of his devices. We're not. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man. In the Lord, for as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman. But all things of God, judge ye yourself. Is it comely that a woman pray unto God uncovered? Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? Well, I don't think he's in this generation anymore. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> but if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. See? 
Now, when you begin to juxtapose this with everything he has said, it looks a bit confusing. But that's why I needed to explain to you what he was talking about. He was talking about she showing a symbol of authority. Now, watch this. Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory for her, for her hair is given her for a covering. But if, now look at this verse 16. But if any man seem to be contentious, we have no such customs, neither in the custom, neither the churches of God. See, don't don't bother contending because of this. That's what he's saying. Don't bother contending because of this. This shouldn't make you uh, say, I cannot, you cannot fellowship with us. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. It's not a custom. See? So I just told you what I think. That's what he said. Now let's go. Now, in this that I declare unto you, I praise you not, that ye come together not for the better, but for the worse. For first of all, now he's talking about something else now. For first of all, when you come together in the church, I hear that there be division among you, and I partly believe it. For there must be also heresy among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. Did you see that? There must be wrong teachers among you. There must be wrong teachings among you, so that in it you will know those who truly God have called when ye come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, every man taketh before one, before other, his own supper. And one is hungry, and another is drunken. What? Have ye not houses to eat and to drink? Or despise ye the church of God, and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you for this? I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke break it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This is the cup of the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as he eat this bread and drink this cup, he do show forth the Lord's death till he comes. Now you, you know, you know what he's talking about here. Wherefore, whosoever drink, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall eat, shall be guilty of the blood, body and blood of Jesus Christ. Now he said, this is talking about breaking of bread now, communion. Now, this is one thing believers do till this day. As a believer, you must, you must be breaking bread. And, and you know, the Lord actually instructed us at the beginning of this month. Now, that's something I, we, I do, I mean, for many years now. My family, we, we do that every day. Every day. Because we receive the command from the Lord. And now, now during our fasting and prayer last, this month, on the first of this month, the Lord spoke to us and, and I instructed, look, everyone, it is important that you begin to break bread on a daily basis. Break bread on a daily basis. It's important. See, now, he says here that, For as often as he eats this bread and drinks this cup, verse 26, ye do show for the Lord. Say, as often as you do. So how often do you do it? Once a month? Once a year? Once a week? You can do it every day. You can even do it morning and evening. As often as you do it, it's left for you. Praise God. Praise God. Now, now he says, Whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. And I've got to stop here. So I'll explain that tomorrow. Praise God. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, thank you. Your truth is taking hold of our hearts. And understanding from you comes to our spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. -bye.